Anakin Skywalker losing to Obi-Wan Kenobi on Mustafar was both good and bad for Darth Sidious. In one, you know, the good parts, he got an apprentice that wasn't going to try to kill him, but the bad parts, Vader was not nearly who he was supposed to be. And Sidious, you know, he, on the treachery of the Sith, if Anakin would have survived and been able to kill him, that's still a success for Sidious in the mind of the Sith. So, him losing to Obi-Wan had mixed reactions, and today, I want to give you his true thoughts on it all, as well as Padme the Jedi, basically just Darth Sidious alone, monologuing in his own mind about everything that transpired at the end of the movie Revenge of the Sith. It's from Dark Lord The Rise of Darth Vader, it's really interesting, and if you'd missed it, yesterday I released a video that I really, really enjoyed, where Vader and Sidious kind of talk to each other in what I think is the best dialogue between them in really any book, really any movie, so check that video out. And today, it's Sidious alone thinking about Vader, thinking about everything that transpired, thinking about Mustafar. So that's what we're going to get into today. Sit back, relax, and for the context, yeah, Sidious is just kind of hanging around on his throne, thinking about everything, especially Anakin Skywalker. Also, hit the like button, please. Thank you. Here we go. As some Jedi had feared from the start, Anakin Skywalker had been ripe for conversion when Qui-Gon Jinn had first brought him to the temple, and for well over a decade, all of Sidious's plans for the boy had unfolded without incident. But even Sidious hadn't foreseen Anakin's defeat by Obi-Wan Kenobi on Mustafar. Anakin had still been between worlds then, and vulnerable, had worked to prolong that vulnerability. Sidious recalled the desperate return to Coruscant, recalled using all of his powers, all of the potions and devices contained in his medkit to minister to Anakin's hopelessly blistered body and burned limbs. He recalled thinking, what if Anakin should die? How many years would he have had to search for an apprentice even half as powerful in the Force, let alone one created by the Force itself to restore balance by allowing the dark side to percolate fully to the surface after a millennium of being stifled? None would be found like Anakin. Sidious would have had to discover a way to compel midichlorians to do his bidding and bring into being one as powerful as Anakin. As it was, Sidious and a host of medical droids had merely restored Anakin to life, which, while no small feat, was a far cry from returning someone from death. For thousands of years, the ability to survive death had been pursued by Sith and Jedi alike, and no one had been successful at discovering the secret. Beings had been saved from dying, but no one had ever cheated death. The most powerful of the ancient Sith Lords had known the secret, but it had been lost or, rather, misplaced. Now that the galaxy was his to rule, there was nothing to prevent Sidious from unlocking that mystery. Then he and his crippled apprentice might hold sway over the galaxy for 10,000 years. They might live eternally if they didn't kill each other first, in large part because Padme Amidala had died. Sidious had deliberately brought her and Anakin together three years earlier, both to rid the Senate of her vote against the Military Creation Act and to put temptation in Anakin's path. Following the murder of Anakin's mother, Anakin had secretly married Padme. When Sidious had learned of this marriage, Sidious knew for certain that Anakin's pathological attachment to her would eventually supply the means for completing his conversion to the dark side. Anakin's fears for her in actuality and in visions, and especially after Padme had become pregnant, had been heightened by keeping him far from her. Then it had simply been a matter of unmasking the Jedi for the hypocrites that they were, sacrificing Dooku to Anakin's rage and promising Anakin that Padme could be saved from certain death. The latter an exaggeration necessary for Anakin's turn for what the Jedi called right thinking, for opening his eyes to his true calling. But such was the way of the Force. It provided opportunities, and one needed only to be ready to seize them. Not for the first time, Sidious wondered what might have happened had Anakin not killed Padme on Mustafar. For all she loved him, she never would have understood or forgiven Anakin's actions at the Jedi Temple. In fact, that was one of the reasons Sidious had sent him there. Clone troopers could have dealt with the instructors and younglings, but Anakin's presence was essential in order to cement his allegiance to the Sith, and more important, 
to seal Padme's fate. Even if she had survived Mustafar, their love would have died. Padme might even have lost the will to live, and their child would have become Sidious's and Vader's to raise. Might that child have been the first member of a new Sith Order of thousands or millions? Hardly. The idea of a Sith Order was a corruption of the intent of the ancient Dark Lords. Fortunately, Darth Bane had understood that and had insisted that only in rare instances should there exist more than two lords, master and apprentice, at any given time. But two were necessary for the perpetuation of the Sith Order, and so it fell to Sidious to complete Vader's convalescence. As Emperor Palpatine, he had no need to reveal his Sith training and mastery to anyone, and for the moment Vader was his crimson blade. Let the galaxy think what it would of Vader, fallen Jedi, surfaced Sith, political enforcer, it didn't matter, since fear would ultimately bring and keep everyone in line. Yes, Vader was not precisely what he had bargained for. Vader's legs and arms were artificial, and he would never be able to summon lightning or leap about like the Jedi he had fond of doing. His dark side training was just beginning, but Sith power resided not in the flesh, but in the will. Self-restraint was promised by the Jedi, praised by the Jedi, only because they didn't know the power of the dark side. Vader's real weaknesses were psychological rather than physical, and for Vader to overcome them he would need to be driven deeper into himself to confront all of his choices, all of his disappointments. Powered by treachery, the Sith-Master-Apprentice relationship was always a dangerous game. Trust was encouraged even while being sabotaged. Loyalty was demanded even while betrayal was prized. Suspicion was nourished even while honesty was praised. In some sense, it was survival of the fittest. Fundamental to Vader's growth was the desire to overthrow his master. Had Vader killed Obi-Wan on Mustafar, he would have attempted to kill Sidious. In fact, Sidious would have been su surprised if Anakin hadn't made that attempt. Now, however, incapable of so much as breathing on his own, Vader could never rise to the challenge, and Sidious understood that he would need to do everything in his power to shake Vader out of his despair and reawaken the incredible power within him, even at Sidious's own peril. So that's Sidious discussing what would really happen if Anakin didn't, you know, die on Mustafar, if his limbs weren't cut off, if his presence to the Force wasn't severed, basically, if Anakin wasn't just basically almost destroyed, if he wasn't turned into the man in the suit, Darth Vader. He would have tried to get Padme, but Padme would have ultimately said no in Vader's mind, and Sidious, treacherous, the reason he sent Anakin to the temple was so Anakin and Padme's love could die. Sidious knew that Padme would never forgive him. Heck, Sidious said that he didn't even need Anakin at the temple to complete the mission, which is devious in its own, but he sent Anakin there after promising to save his wife, knowing it would sever the relationship, and luckily Padme had died on Mustafar. If she hadn't, who knows where Vader would be, and ultimately, probably not with Padme, that's what Sidious thinks. And he also thinks that if Vader killed Obi-Wan on Mustafar, he would have tried to kill Sidious, and that would have been an interesting thing. And Sidious is even like, hey, that's part of the Sith, it's what we do. So it's interesting, you know, his point of view of it all, of what if Anakin killed Obi-Wan. Anyways, let me know what you thought, let me know if you liked the video. I hope you did, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.